Hello my aviation friends, today I would like to show you how to replace command sensor unit on A320 and what is it good for. So let's go. This device we can find in the cockpit inside of the center pedestal and is interconnected with a slat flap control lever. Pilots through this lever will move drive shaft of the command sensor unit and this movement is then transferred to electrical signal and this signal is then sent to flap slat control computer which will process this request and send command to hydromechanical power control unit of slats and hydromechanical control unit of the flaps to move high lift devices to required position. And by the way, flaps and slats are here to extend the surface of the wing, which will create more lift. This will also reduce angle of attack, but it will increase the drag. That's why pilots have possibility to select one of the five options to move high lift devices to require position for aircraft speed, which will change angle of high lift devices. That was a little bit of theory. And now let's take a look on the replacement of this component. And as always, we need to start with the setting airplane to maintenance configurations, which mean to pulling all required CBs. And in this case, we need to be sure that flaps and slots are retracted. As you can see, not all CBs are located in the cockpit. And I have a question for you. Do you know what is the number of this panel? And since all CBs are pulled, and properly tagged, we can start with the replacement of the command sensor unit. Control lever holds on the place thanks to four screws. Uh, this is uh, one of the few panels which actually have real screws because uh, almost all panels in the cockpit holds uh, thanks to the fasteners on place. Before removal of the cables, it's really necessary to inspect if the both cables are correctly tagged because uh, connectors have a similar size. This kind of duplicate inspection prevents incorrect installation. And for removal of the connectors I'm using connector pliers which have a soft jaws which of course prevent damage to the connectors. Since this is done we can remove CSU from the control lever. These two units hold together thanks to four bolts, which are secured by lockware, which I'm removing at the moment. And finally we can remove four bolts, which hold them together. And this is SCU. In the middle we can find drive shaft which has external splines with one spline removed which gives you a reference point for zero. There are also two zero marks, one on the end of the drive shaft and one on the housing. And when the zero marks are aligned, the CSU is at mechanical zero. Inside we can find four rotary switches, which are connected to two electrical connectors. Signal from set of the tracks on each switch goes to connector A and signal from the other set of the tracks go to connector B. Another very important part of CSU is a friction brake which has a spring-loaded friction disc pack installed on the drive shaft of the CSU. The friction brake has two functions. One is to hold CSU in the last set position after drive shaft shear and uh, applying friction to the drive shaft. And since we know everything about command sensor unit, we can install it on the control lever. And at this point, it's very important that all marks align. Both of us agree that the position is correct, so I can install all four bolts. Okay. So 
And since all four bolts are tight, we need to safety them with a lock wire. Of course, a diameter which you need to use, you will find in your AMM. And since both components are assembled together, let me tell you a little bit about the lever assembly. It has spring-loaded plunger, quadrant that connect the pinion and the knob with a collar. A pin at the lower end of the spring-loaded plunger engages in one of the notches of the five position gate. A bulk above the second and fourth notches of the five position gate stops one movement change of the lever positions, which means that you are not able to move from zero to full with the one movement. When you lift the collar, the pin comes clear from the one of the notches of the five position gate. And to move the lever past the bulk, you need to release the collar. As the lever moves from position to the next, quadrant turns the pinion. The pinion then turns the rotary switch of SCU. And now you know everything about both components, so we can proceed with the installation of the connectors. And as you remember, we checked if they are correctly marked, so which means that now we just need to find the cable with the correct label and install it on exact position. All three connectors are installed, so we can place control lever AC into the position and install all four screws. Installation is performed, so we can close all CVs. And since Thomas is my duplicate inspector, he will check if all CVs are closed. Then I move to the avionic bay where I'll close all remaining CVs. After that I need to install cover on that panel and actually on the cover you can see the number of the panel. And all what's remaining is to perform tests, which mean extend and retract the flaps. And meanwhile, I'll tell you a little bit about this function. From zero, we move lever to position one, which on the ECAM is showed as a one or one plus F, which mean one plus flaps. This depends on the speed. 
If the speed is about 215 knots, only sluts will extend to 18 degrees and this will be indicated as a 1. If speed drops below 215 knots, also flaps will extend to 10 degrees which will be indicated as a 1 plus F. Then we move lever in position 2 which will extend sluts into 22 degrees, flaps in 15 degrees, on ECAM it will be shown as a number 2 and pilots will extend the flaps to this position if the speed is below 200 knots. After that we move lever to position 3 which will keep the sluts in 22 degrees, flaps will extend to 20 degrees, on the ECAM it will be shown as a 3 and this mode is used if the speed drops below 185 knots. And the last set position is full, which means that sluts will move to 27 degrees, flaps will move to 35 degrees, on ECAM it's shown as a full, and this mode is set when speed drops under 177 knots. This setting is used only for landing, and we are back on 3, which is used for takeoff, approach and landing. Then we move lever to position 2, this position is used for takeoff and approach. Then we move lever to position 1, which means that if it is 1 plus F is used for takeoff, but only 1 is used for hold. And last position is position 0 or retract. And since our job is done, we need to return aircraft back to initial configuration. And we get to the end of the video. As always, I would like to ask you to don't use this as a replacement of the manual. Always use latest documentation released by a manufacturer. If you learn something new, give me a like. And if you want to see similar content, consider to subscribe to my channel, because many other videos are coming. Thank you for your time, my name is Tomáš, this was Aircraft Maintenance with Zetor and I'll see you next one, bye.